Doing Time with Deputy Mike. Hi, welcome back to Doing Time with Deputy Mike. I'm your host, Mike. And today I have a really special guest, which I'm glad he was able to come in. He's a very important man. Mr. Fred Barrett works with uh, PBS. So without further ado, let's go into roll call. Grab your feet and take a seat. It's roll call time. Fred, welcome back. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. For your <laughs> I'm happy to have you here. <clears throat> Go ahead, if you wouldn't mind. Inter- I've already introduced him like three yeah. times, but. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, Fred Barrett with PBS Western Reserve. Uh, my title is the Emerging Media Learning and Development Manager, which is a fancy way of saying I teach and promote digital content and produce it. And I also have a, a freelance on, on my own, and uh, but I love teaching digital content to the community. Now, I'm Evan Lewis. I am a student in multimedia. And I'm just basically here today, so. Well, welcome aboard. <laughs> <laughs> so. um, I'm Andrew Cornelius. I'm also an interactive multimedia student. And this year I'm doing the BPA podcast team. So oh, this would be a good reason to come on. All right, let's get on with it and go into interrogation time. <coughs> interrogation time. So Fred, you were actually off, uh, off mic. I uh, was telling us a really cool story about a, a young gentleman that you've actually been kind of helping through. And if, if you could actually share that story again, <clears throat> that's a really nice story. Okay. Well, his name is Aiden Booker. He's at Twinsburg Heights. And I met him at a Cleveland Media Academy last summer, which was held with in, in conjunction with WKYC, uh, the Greater Cleveland um, Associated Black Journalists, and a couple other groups I can't think of right now. But it, it was... Uh, open to all students of journalism in any school. And I went and did a lecture on podcasting. And I actually chose students who were really engaging, who spoke up, because there's a <laughs> phrase and they say, uh, closed mouths don't get fed. So I always look for the <laughs> student with the mouths open. <laughs> so, uh, but he, was, he wasn't he was as vocal in the camp, so I gave a prize to the <laughs> main student, then I gave him a second chance, so he spoke up. So I sent him a gift, and uh, from that point, when I saw his drive and trying to be a, a journalist, he has a, a Instagram that he created. And I saw that he had passion in it. If you show me passion, I'll open up some doors for you. And from that point, I urged him to uh, apply for the PBS Student Reporting Lab, which was in Boston last year at Emerson College. And I know it changed his life. He did a story on, um, on PBS Student Reporting Lab on a lighthouse. It's a wonderful piece. Yeah. Um, I think they shot it with the C70, but he did a voiceover on it. And from that point, he w- ended up took self, taking self-initiative and went to a Walter Cronkite uh, camp in Arizona, Arizona State. When I saw that, I made a call, and, and I introduced him to Russ Mitchell at WKYC. So we went to the visit the station, did a tour from that point. And one thing I haven't told him is that I'm working on getting him in a camp for at Ohio University next summer and Northwestern. Nice. So, nice. Yeah. <clears throat> See those those are nice. I mean, <clears throat> when you find young people, and <laughs> well, I mean, I, 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 I don't right. want to call you guys yeah. kids, you mm-hmm. know, young yeah. adults. Yeah, no, I get it. <clears throat> students, but the ones that really, like he said, uh, I like that closed mouths. I mean, because if you're sitting there closed mouth, then you have no gumption, to my my opinion. Like his, it's just like you're sitting there for the ride. Yeah, but uh, so. <clears throat> What are you um, working on? What's what's new with you? Well, um, at the station, we have a, a series called City Centric, and we've highlighted Akron, Alliance, Youngtown, Sk- uh, Kent, Canton, and Sharon, Pennsylvania, all up in our, in our viewing range. And uh, this is a piece that's highlighting the city, um, which uh, my personal slogan on my freelance is the value of the community is based on the story being shown. And you can put told on there, too, as far as audio. Yeah. So we highlight these communities, and which may not get another, a lot of light from the major media. And we, it's been produced by another team, uh, uh, a freelance team, but I came back, I'm on the back end, and produced a podcast for the series. Okay. Which just, it was filmed like maybe a year or so ago. And so the podcast provides a current up-to-date piece. 
and it's really it's really fun to see when people get excited to be like highlighted, especially on the podcast. They it's they they just get excited. We we actually we've been doing it digitally on the Roadcaster Pro. We take the call in, and the VP of Education used to host an under engineer in the back. I master it, and I put it on Spotify. So outside of um, just the podcast segment, mm-hmm. you said there was that's the back end of it. What was no. the main project? Uh, well, the main project was really launching. We just started in September. Okay. So okay. it was like six episodes, and this is our first season. <laughs> Episode, so. what, what would you call it? Just the pod, the podcast episodes, and what's it called? Uh, City Centric. City Centric. Yes. Okay, okay. okay. So okay. on uh, our September 1st, we had Akron. Akron. Okay. And what I did was produce the podcast when the show came out. Gotcha. So after that, it was Alliance. Yeah. yeah. So what we do, we just call the guest again, because it's been like a year, like I said, since they filmed it. Because yeah. in TV, it takes a while before something's produced and then right, it's aired. right. A podcast it could be instant so um we decided to put some digital so we call those same guests to give us what's up to date uh once they see the piece because a lot of them hadn't even seen the piece <coughs> okay so for the guests yeah is it local people or like yeah local who, just local yeah people. local people okay, cool so one of the guests we had was um especially out of alliance was a guy who owns a vintage uh store he sells antiques and he grew up in the area well uh what store is that my dad was, I couldn't, lived in I couldn't Lions tell this past you. year. He's the, only, he's the only vintage store in town. So. Okay, okay, cool. <laughs> I can't well, remember. His name is uh, Ed Albert, I believe his name this is. This is on Spotify and YouTube? Yes. Okay, cool. yes. So I can just go watch it. Yeah, you can PBS yeah. Western Reserve on Spotify. Okay. Okay. And uh, we had the uh, guy named Joe Mazzola. He's part of it. And he talked about the Gardenia Festival they have there. Yeah. Um, we got we, the Akron. We did uh, one guy named Tony Tropy. Um, Actually, we did uh, a guy named Steve, Steve Coon. He's a construction guy. He goes around. Actually, he's out of Kent. And he's uh, re- revitalizes lots, a lot of buildings throughout the region. Buildings that, that people, oh, we're going to throw this building away. He comes and restores it. So there's a lot of interesting story of these people. So that's the key. When you highlight people with digital content, yeah. oh, you, you'll, get, you'll get the following. <laughs> so. Right. But it's like, you know, like with old architecture, I mean, I love going to a city and where it's all like the old buildings, restored old buildings. Yeah. They just get, got that class to them yeah. where a, me, a skyscraper me and, um, doesn't. Yeah, <laughs> me and Duran were talking about this yesterday. He was talking about how VPA was hosted in Boston the one year. And pretty much like I said, I really like Boston because like the way the buildings were built back then, there wasn't steel. So mm-hmm. they're not skyscrapers like you're saying, because right. they weren't as easy to build. So there are these very longer, shorter buildings. I, I like that so much more. They look very nice. And the designs, I mean. The designs so are much designs. better. Yeah. yeah. Well, you go to some townships and, and they won't tell you this, but if, if you go to a town that has, still has that style mm-hmm. and you go through the town, you don't see those, uh, like if you see a McDonald's and you see the sign, most areas, the sign is above the building, all in the sky. Yeah. Right. Some townships is low to the ground. Right. They don't want those. The they want to keep the old vibe of the integrity, the integrity of the, of the area. Yeah, right. So every sign is real low. When you see that, when you see that, it's a good chance that town has a little money on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> well, um, so explain to us because you were talking about freelancing. For those that don't know what mm. exactly what you're doing, like freelancers. So freelance, well, you're providing services to a company without uh, being full time, and. For some, it's a it's a pleasure. For some, is a it's a struggle. And with this, when it comes to this media content, if you don't understand marketing and business, <laughs> mm-hmm. you might not get the value because freelancers could make a lot of money if they know the marketing and business side. Where um, some freelancers they bounce from client to client. Sometimes you can get one client to be freelancing from them forever. So, right. so for example, um, when I get out of here, I want to uh, go to college for media again and mm-hmm. technology. Um, I'm going to do a business minor and some of the production company I wanted to build, I wanted to make a freelance video crews and stuff. So like someone who needs a video crew, who has an idea or a station, they need a video crew for something, you freelance them and you send them out on those jobs. And I wanted to like create, you know, be the head of that, be like, okay, you're on this job this week and do freelance work with a um, media. I yeah. Think it'd be very yeah. You want to be a director, director, right. producer. Actually. Yeah. For my own place though. Yeah. I want to. I'm gonna put down a s- small sum of cash and yeah. use it for a business loan to get that started after college. And actually, it doesn't even take as much as you think it does. <laughs> yeah. No, no, yeah, yeah. it doesn't actually. Yeah, I've got a good amount saved already okay. for it. So okay. yeah, 
Well, not only from, you know, for example, like, my dad's a freelancer, so, uh... What's he do? Uh, he, te <coughs> he technically works for the NFL, but honestly, not only does he work for them, but he also bounces back and forth between NBC and... Oh, uh, nice. What, what's he do for those stations, for <coughs> NFL and NBC and whatnot? Uh, it's, like, news stories gotcha. and bunch of other stuff he's done reality tv shows in uh alaska he's gone to mexico he's nice. left the country and nice. went to morocco and so those are that's that, cool. that's, that's nice on, yeah. Yeah. yeah on those job sites what does he do though like what's it, his he's done audio it's just basically oh, yeah. your typical you know mm. you're sitting on mixers you you know you're on the football field during games he's mm -hmm. on the sideline he's either doing uh player wires or he's on the sidelines with the 50 foot the, yeah, the yeah, boom the hole. Yeah, boom. Oh, the boom. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about now. I was yeah. a freelancer for, um, well, I still am, but they haven't called me in a while, <clears throat> for a group called Stats Perform. And they also are connected to the zone, D A Z N. Okay. And I oh, cover. Yeah. Um, I actually am subscribed to the zone for boxing events and stuff. Okay. Yeah, that's what I. I uh, it's not every weekend, but it's close. Like yeah, they, a lot they, of material I shot yeah. for stats performed, the zone picked up. Yeah, because I okay, covered. Cool. I, I started with uh, when LeBron came back to to the Cavs. Yeah, and I covered all the finals. I was all the games. Okay, and I ended up uh, doing covering uh, the the uh, I covered the World Series with the yeah. now Guardians. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the Browns fell into that mix too, so I covered all the Cleveland sports for like five years straight. You're meeting a lot of athletes and stuff for a while. Yeah, huh? yeah. yeah, that's pretty. Actually, cool. Actually, my background. Uh, is extensive, but I started um, in sports management, event management. Okay. My first, my first major event man, uh, event was the 2001 Conference USA Men's Basketball. Thrown in it, I, I didn't have my degree. <laughs> Just awesome. Not, I, but I knew money. It's the, yeah, right, uh, right. I was a creative person. Exactly. I always tell students that in in this field that you you are some of the most powerful people in the world because media shapes things. So the, exactly. I mean, right. those that control the media control the world. Yes, yeah, they I mean, do. And that's a fact. I mean, mass media is the <coughs> way everyone gets their information now. It's not just like you turn on the news or you get a newspaper. You go to social media or a news media site. Like you don't just turn on the news anymore. You use media. Yep. So Somebody, somebody's it's producing true. it. Someone, someone's <laughs> pro right. right. You got to think there's a there's not just someone producing. It, there's a whole team behind that scenes. So. Well, friend, I know pretty I, I'm pretty sure I asked you this question last time, but. Since we're in a new year and everything, what, how did you, what was, what sparked you to, to start it on your path doing all this? I was <laughs> one of those kids that was, I, to be boastful, I was multi talented, but I was in an area that couldn't perceive that talent. As a kid, I was, a, I wanted to be an artist, I wanted to be a DJ, I wanted to produce mu music, write music, but in my environment, with my size, it was like, man, forget that music and that art, put this helmet on. <laughs> so I um I really want to add to that is yeah. I live I lived in a very small uh, town as mm. well. Mm. Everyone knows everyone, and everyone knows everyone's business and whatnot. And yeah. you know I feel like my creative stem was very shot down there because it was like what you said. Like I mean I played football. They're like put a helmet on. What are you doing? You're not you're not gonna make music or media. You're not doing any of that. But then I got the chance to come here, and that was really like oh I can go there and leave this and go do what I want to do. Like I can be passionate about what I want to do, go do it. So pretty much coming here, let me leave all that behind yeah. and finally get to do media, video, and music. And I've, I've loved it since. What, what I love is, well, I wish, I wish that when I went to school that there was some type of program like this because I can tell you right now, I wouldn't be sitting here dressed as this. Right, I would, right. I, I would have found a whole different passion doing this. No, yeah. See, that, that's the thing with me. When I came along, none of this was around. It didn't. It didn't come around till actually. So I, I went went to high school, had a, a scholarship. I was still wanting to do journalism and whatever something. And they didn't have it at the time. And I ended up leaving school and I joined the military. That's when computers, home computers, are really hitting. Yeah. And so I get. I, matter of fact, well, if you know Photoshop, <laughs> right. I always I always share this. I learned Photoshop when it did not have layers. Okay. Uh, wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, so I know all this stuff. I never got certified. I, I was like, okay, I, I know it enough. I didn't want to teach it. That's the only bit of yeah. I seen in the certification. Right. And so I was always a self learner. I was the one that was uh, downloading legal versions of the program just to teach myself. 
Right. right. And along the and now when I was 13, 14, we had this church that had a radio station, TV station. Mm-hmm. So I started in that. Okay. I was doing that. But I knew the basics of composition and headroom and following, lead, taking lead on the camera. Man, I was doing all that. I want to know um, when you started doing that. How old were you by the time you started working <coughs> with that church? Uh, 13. See, that's my problem recently mm-hmm. is – I've been trying to get a job in media, like um, not even just something crazy, like even like I have an internship with Cavs Legion as of right now. Okay. But I'm trying to get something that's paying. It doesn't have to be high pay. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm just looking for a job. So I've applied as media directors and, you know, camera operators, all that stuff, all you can imagine. And it's just like really hard at our age because they're like, they want management experience and they want a high school degree and they want all this. It just fluffs. So, like, yeah. (laughs) It just fluffs. I'm going to tell you what you're heading up against. You got the people who know. And the mm. people who don't know. Yeah. And the people who don't know are the gatekeepers. That's right. why they throw you all that junk at you. Yeah. This, and you have to really got go, go into that, like we were talking off of Mike, about networking. Mm. That's how you circumvent this. Yeah, I've been, my cover letters have been very, you know, like trying to explain to them that I know that it doesn't seem like, I'm giving them my experience, um, mm. such as Emmy and BPA, that I've done both those competitions. Mm. And... It's like, I know I'm young and don't have management experience, but if you look at this stuff, it's like, <laughs> I've done things. Like, I'm like I'm certified in uh, two Adobe products as of right now. Yeah. So it's like, you know, I've been doing stuff with the industry. I'm not just like sitting around. Like, I could definitely come in and do it. And most of those people you're gonna send that to are gonna look at it, they have no clue what you're doing. Yeah. None. No. And with me, I've always been the type, and I've always told people you have to produce something and send that to the right people. Yeah. And we people tend to make up uh, create obstacles that don't exist for example uh most kids might say oh oh or they hear the aspect of you don't need you don't need linkedin yeah you do <laughs> yeah the people the powers that be you use linkedin right and those who say that don't know how to network right and so when you go to linkedin everything you can produce you just that's your real like i know yeah. some videographers they got a real i never had a real never had a real right i just put out content i created and mm-hmm. put it on my link. Well, I didn't need it. It was yeah. for me. I was shooting video, and it's a long story how I ended up getting this London group to hire me to do whatever. Yeah. But I actually picked up a camera and started shooting on my own and creating stuff. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's how it all starts. Um, for example, I know TCTC is very adamant about us working on portfolios and mm-hmm. making our portfolio with all of our stuff on it. So, like, yeah. you know, when I finally go to get a job, I'm like, here's everything I've done. Like, you know, from every little video I've done to big projects I've done, it's right here for you. Right. you know what I mean, like you were saying. And if you want to target somebody, uh, so for me, I didn't really start when I got here in Akron, I was working for the Beacon Journal. Mm-hmm. And one day I just, I was always into some type of media. I had a website company, I had graphics, I learned animation, I did all this stuff. I was just doing this on the side. Gotcha. And, and one day, um, photography too, been there for years. I went to United Way, this is 10, 12 years ago, probably longer than that. And I just started taking photos of their events. And I would give, I would give them to them. They said, oh, these are great and wonderful. Because I don't take photos where people pose. I'm like, hey, everybody at this event, everybody hugging each other. No, yeah, I take right. pictures of activities. Action shots. <coughs> Action shots. Yes, yes. So I sent that United Way, and one day they come me back, so how much would you charge to come out to this event? I charge. Oh. Yeah, yeah okay. you're right. <laughs> That's like, all right. You're like, I can choose. See, yeah. I've um I've done stuff like that where it's like um, wanting to go do video work for people and whatnot. And like, so what would you charge in my head? I'm like, I, oh, that's, that's a lo- I got I got a formula I'm for like, that. I'm like, what's a, I'm like, what's a, we'll have to talk after this yeah. for sure because I need to know what a proper way to know what to charge yeah. is, you know. How, how do you figure out, like, what, I guess you're worth, but. How do you come up? Well, yeah. How do you come up with a formula? I mean, everybody is different. <clears throat> so it took me um, a while to figure that out. But uh, to keep it short, you have to look at how much time you've put into it. You have okay. a, you studied, you practiced, especially when you start buying equipment. Mm-hmm. You start buying yes. equipment. You look at that to what you're providing and the impact that you're bringing to that person. Mm-hmm. When you when you sit back and say, okay, it's really about a feeling. If you put in, let's say, two hours of study and you got a little $50 camera yeah. and somebody comes in and says, hey, would you come shoot an interview for me and I give you 50 bucks? How you feel? Well, there's the camera paid for. Yeah, well, yeah. 
and then, but you feel good. Well, you feel good because two hours of work, you just made twenty five yeah. bucks an hour. Yeah, in reality, right. And if, right, you, right. if you you spend four years in school and you got a five thousand dollar camera and say, "Oh, I got fifty bucks, can you come give me an interview?" What are you gonna say? Oh, yeah, <laughs> I, I get it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, maybe that's not worth. Yeah, it. it's not worth it. So yeah. it's like, okay, now I, it took me a while to learn that because I. Yeah. And one thing, I, one mistake I made, uh, made is uh, mixing friends with business. Yes. And quick thirty second story. <laughs> I had a five thousand dollar camera. That was my first camera. Yeah. It was a Canon XH1S. It was on tape, <laughs> and a little about. digital tape. Yeah. And I was I was new to it. And a friend asked me to come film it. I I really I didn't know about like uh, temperature lights and all this. Like thirteen fourteen years ago. Right. <clears throat> we did this week long piece, and I'm thinking, okay, she's gonna take care of me once it's all over with. Because I'm like, this is a long time. And I th- I, let's say I put twenty hours on that, and I'm thinking, okay, okay if you give me three four hundred bucks, I'd be cool. Yeah, yeah. Reasonable. She, she, she gave me a hundred bucks. Wow. I hate it wow. to this day. That's <laughs> not, yeah, that's not. Right. You know, yeah. You're, you're right. You never do business with friends or yeah. family. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because one side is going to show true colors mm, or like, right. or they're yeah. going to be like, oh, one you're side good. expects you're good. you to do more. Yeah. For right. less. And I learned, she right. taught me a lesson. I ain't like that lesson. No. But, <laughs> yeah. but after that, I'm like, ooh. But it took a while to say, okay, what? What am I bringing? What impact? When I, especially when I started studying, right? Hours on hours and techniques and buying software and all this other stuff, mm-hmm. and then my money started going up mm-hmm. to where when I started, just to give you a ballpark figure, uh, yeah. the, the company overseas, yeah, you go to a game, and it's not a lot. I would go to a game, get footage of the practice. Let's say, the, let's say the Cavs. I'll be on the court, practice, and then catch the interviews at the end. I had to do nothing else. Okay, five six hours just that whole day so or that whole night right i was getting 100 plus an hour just for that 100 plus an hour for that now here's the game here's the game i learned so let's say let's say they paid me the low end especially clean the market that time was 350 i was getting double that right for per game right right but that company would take it and they would sell it around the world oh gotcha yeah oh I see what you mean. So okay. they they can, they can yeah. go sell it to an outlet in Spain at yep. two thousand dollars. But well, something yeah. nowadays you got to figure is okay. You did interviews at the end. Yeah. Cool. They take that post on YouTube pops off. Let's say it only did like a hundred k to a million. Yeah. Right. It's still a lot of money. They just made off ad revenue. But you still got to look at this team. If they sell it to like well, my work, I actually would do this every after every game, maybe two days later. Mm-hmm. I had a VPN. I would search the title. They'll send me the title that you put on it. Yeah. And I would search how many papers it went around the nation. I mean, around the world. My yeah. stuff was around the world to where you, uh, Yahoo would pick it up, NBC, MSNBC, but these international papers would pick Are it up. Are also picking it up. Yeah. Right. So you can have 40 YouTube channels at a million a piece. Right. Now, now, how does that 700 that I just made, what did it do for them? Right. <laughs> they were averaging three, 400,000 every clip I gave them. Yeah. Yeah, it's like uh, yeah, I mean. the Gilligan's Island kind of thing. Okay, yeah. <laughs> well, he knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. One of the longest rerun shows, and these actors didn't when they did their contracts. None of them got like what do you, what'd you call it? The residuals. Uh, yes. So they're making millions off of reruns and reruns and reruns, yeah. and, and yeah. these guys got nothing. <clears throat> and that's the thing that was going on in Hollywood with the actors. Yeah. Why they're like striking, yeah, yeah. unionizing yeah. a little. Yeah, when, so when, you, when you're on a show, and it's writers too, by the way. Before yeah, yeah, I everybody, yeah, sorry, writers, everybody, sure. yeah, yeah, production sorry. crew and everything. Okay, cool, good. So <laughs> they made they had deals that were based on broadcast TV. Mm. Oh, you know, residual. Oh, every time is there, I'm just making up numbers. Every time is there, yeah. I get twenty dollars. This is a show that's been on for thirty years. So okay, it could, it could air, and let's say you're making residual ten thousand, twenty thousand a year, and this show could be super old. Right. But now they say, okay, we're not going <laughs> to put this on broadcast anymore. We're going to take this online. We're going to put it on Hulu. Yeah. Now your 10000 20000 a year turns into $200 because you don't have a streaming deal. <laughs> That's okay. So I got one with you for that. Yeah. That's why HBO Max changed mm-hmm. to just Max. Because yeah. mm-hmm. when you had HBO yeah. in the title, you had to pay those residuals. Yeah. But when right. you just have Max and you're a different brand, instead it's of the just... channel you were – yeah. You don't have to pay them those anymore. Exactly. That's what happened with HBO Max. Exactly. That's why it's just, that's why they rebranded. Even though they were going to lose some, you know, like subscriptions or viewership because, you know, whenever you do a rebrand or something like that, you have people fall off. It's just a statistic. But they were going to make the money back off not having to pay the people. This they, is why you had to learn business when yeah. you're learning production. Right. 
podcasting, graphics, art, you gotta know know the That's, business side. That is why my minor is gonna be in business, like for sure. Or oh, double major. <laughs> double major. That sounds tough. But it's like, the only difference, be, like four or five classes. <laughs> no, you're actually right. Yeah. Is like my dad, me and my dad were talking about about that. He's like, if you want to do a minor in it, uh, while you do your other class, and then when you finish that, so it's not too much work, go back for half a year or another year, yeah. and you can just finish it. I taught, I taught at Kent State for 14 years. So. My dad um, is a financial aid advisor. At nice. Kent. Okay. So he um, he was like, just go back for a half year or another year and just finish your business classes, and you'll just get a degree in that too. And I went, well, wow. sounds like a good idea, actually. And I, tell, I tell students too, there is money everywhere regarding media. It's everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. Everybody needs it. Like, I mean, I – this is a terrible example and I hate like using these examples because mm. personally I don't even use TikTok at all. Yeah. But someone just pops on there and could show a video of their dog and all of a sudden they, it, I know their creator fund isn't big, that's $50 in your bank account all of a right. sudden for like t 10 million views. All of a sudden you now, get 50 now, bucks. Now, you know see, I mean? that's, a, that's a, what I like to, I like to paint this because I teach this too. I even do a skit when I go to high schools and, and teach them about influencer money. Mm -hmm. I actually bought a bunch. I actually got a stack of fake Hollywood money. Yeah. And I would get three students and make and one student has a lanyard says YouTube, one says TikTok, one says Instagram. Yeah. And I have a, a kid that wants to be an influencer, and I give money to each the three to mm -hmm. present how much money they actually get. It takes a lot of work for that stuff to hit because somebody may use that example. And not everybody's going to get 10 million views. It's right, like a lottery. Right. Right. right so right. when it comes to media, I mean, this is this is the money game mm -hmm. with the TikToks of the world or whatever. To me, the money you may get out of that is finding a nickel on the ground when you're walking across the parking lot. <laughs> that's, <laughs> why, yeah. that's why I'm not big on the whole influencer yeah. thing or stuff oh, yeah, like yeah. that. Like filmmaker, that sounds much that's better. Money. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's much that's better. Money. Like film editor, filmmaker, that sounds great. Now, making short YouTube videos for a nickel on the ground, like you said, in yeah. comparison. Right. And I like that. Like you mentioned uh, pets. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you do If you do a, a, a professional layout, it, that, it won't take a lot. But a decent camera, Mike likes, and put a story behind it, commercialize mm -hmm. it, and start publishing for, let's say, a, a pet adoption company. Yep. And it helps them helps them do that. Right. Then that's that can right. generate they'll the pay, money. They'll pay you for that. Either that yeah. company won't, or a company will sponsor your stuff. Uh huh. That's how they that work. That game works. Right. That's where the money comes that's from, what it comes from with them too. Is the sponsorship. Yeah. And the money you're making from right. those and the ads. Well, I know when I retire here in a few years, I would like to. I would like to carry this on, but I guess you could say privately where I'm making some kind of income off of it. Yeah. <laughs> well, with connections, it's like this. So um, this area, I mentioned this on the on the last uh, podcast. What's the name of this this, this town? Doing, Doing time, time with yeah. deputy. I mean, no, no, the area. The name. Oh, oh uh, Trumbull, Trumbull, Trumbull County. Trumbull County. Yeah, there Trumbull you go. County. What other media outlet is in Trumbull County? WWKBN. What's well, how many youth actually listen to that? Oh. Well, <laughs> never mind. None. Okay. <laughs> I take it back. I watch the that, weather that, in the that's, morning. That's, that's it. just our Yeah, weather in the morning. So, WKBN yeah. is our news yeah. station. That's all it is. So, so yeah. like I mentioned this, I mentioned this so many people where when I was a kid, and he'll remember this story, when I was a kid, if you wanted to find out what was going on in the city, mm -hmm. the time, and the temp, you called a phone number. Right. Yeah, really? matter of fact, the number still works. Yeah, the yeah, number still works. We just I didn't did know it that. the other day. We were talking to time and temperature. Yeah, it was time and temperature. <laughs> Three nine four seven zero seven zero. In right my home time was nine zero one five two six five two six one. What time is it? All right, make sure they clock right. Call the phone. <laughs> yeah. What's I, going on? I Boom. never knew that's how that worked. Yeah, yes. that's yes. crazy. Yes. So, it, and people still need that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you took a podcast and says, okay, Trumbull County, whatever, whatever, <laughs> and you list out all the events that's in town. Yeah. Like when I when I mention news and media, where can by, where can somebody go in, in Trauma County and say, okay, I just want to hear the events that's coming up in my area. Where can they go? Because most of the stuff you got fluff in between. Yeah, right. <laughs> so right. If, if you got an event, you do a five minute podcast, five five minute podcast <laughs> of all the events in the area. You right. get it once a week. Yeah. Every person that has that that, that can pay for a spot in that podcast. Hey, in mm -hmm. Trauma County today, here's what we're doing. Put that on Spotify. Yeah. But let's say you get ten events every every two weeks, and oh. people pay a hundred bucks just to be to, just to listen to it, yep. just to be on that thing. So if you got ten spots, hundred bucks a piece, a thousand dollars every two weeks for a five minute podcast. Right. Yeah, that, I mean that's two thousand a month. I talk to this with my photographer friend all the time. Yeah. He's like, he does. gentlemen, I have to leave. Uh, 
please finish this. I got, unfortunately, my job is calling. Okay. I got okay. you. It's all good. We'll be all just right. fine. Have a, bye, Deputy. See Take you it guys. easy. See ya. So, nah, lost where we were. Yeah, okay, I was talking to, my, yeah. talking to my photographer friend, mm. and he was explaining to me how he does graduation okay. uh, photos. And, I used to do that. You now. know, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, just um, fall time photos, family photos. That's what I was getting mm. at, and wedding photos. And, like, they'll pay. It, the problem is, like, photographers and videographers, like, their, they're, like, prices are so high. So he can just go look at one of their prices and be like, oh, I'll just undercut him by 50 bucks. And yeah. all of a sudden, he's the one getting hired for still a lot of money. 50 bucks less than the next guy. It depends. Yeah, yeah. The, I can see that the strategy works because I did that with websites. Yeah. When yeah. I, so when, when, the one thing I always I tell people, too, and it's going to sound crazy that traditional media is going to start coming back. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, matter of fact, the Phoenix Suns, they are going to provide their basketball games over the air starting next season. Antenna. Uh, until they, uh, the, the, Antenna. Their, yeah. There you go. Thank uh, you. In their viewing market. Uh, yeah, I still use – I have NFL ticket, yeah. but I was using Antenna before that for whatever game. Yeah, a lot of people don't, people don't know that. Yeah. And then you got uh, print. Like, you're talking about your photography, mm. photography frame. Right. So if you had a an event – Let's say it's an event every year, and it's big in the area. You go and take a bunch mm -hmm. of photos, and you go make a photo book. If yeah, you know yeah. business and marketing, now you can turn around and sell that photo book. Yeah, yeah. And everybody's right. like, oh, "I was in that book." Like Cleveland Scene is a perfect <laughs> right. example of that. Oh yeah, right. No, Cleveland I perfect example of that. So if you look at the way traditional media was conducted, which we kind of doing today, mm -hmm. the practice that we did in radio, you're really doing it on a podcast. It's just digital. Yeah. Because the and I'll end on this, when it comes to digital content. The purpose of digital content is this. The word digital simply means in hand. Right. The word content is in the word itself. Right. With the word content, well, if you look at that word in the same way that it's spelled. Yeah. Same letters. What's another way to say that word? Digital. Content. Oh, content. Content. Yeah, con content. You, got, you create content. content right. The content makes you feel good. Right, right. So digital content is to make people feel good with your media in their hands. Yeah. <laughs> that's the secret. If you make people feel good, that's when that's your first foray into gaining an audience and making money. Yeah. Something um, I've noticed recently when we were talking about uh, normal uh, lines of media coming back like in and whatnot, and I mm. totally believe that. Mm. The one thing that is going to be done with soon is cable. That's oh, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's, know, it's, yeah. There, something about their business market really gets to me because they're, um, they, people keep leaving and mm. they up their prices. If people are leaving, why wouldn't you lower them and undercut the streaming services? Instead, they're upping their prices to make the low amount of people there pay more so they're still making the same money. Well, people don't understand the level of money that cable used to even build that system, yeah. like the cabling. Yeah, it's no, no, huge. I know. And it's just our school bell. Okay. I bet it happened last time. Yeah. <laughs> um, when they realize that kind of money, but the cable systems are the same people that also provide internet services. Yeah, yeah, yeah So right. the cabling is the same, there's a different signal coming through. Yeah, yeah. And slowly but surely, especially with the economic volatility that's getting ready to hit, mm. people are gonna start like cutting, like spending less money. Let's right. go get this antenna, yep. let's go get this, let's go get that. I mean, okay, for example, well, mm. I'll tell you what I use, uh, mm. NFL tickets on YouTube TV. Yes. Mm. YouTube TV is seventy-two ninety-nine a month. Cable is, Two thirty, yeah, yeah, yeah. Two thirty, yeah, oh yeah. Two thirty, two thirty yeah. a month. Now, here's what I tell people. That's what got me away from it because I got a YouTube TV. Yeah. If people actually sit down, because I had cable for years. Yeah. And let's say when I moved to Akron, oh three. Okay. And one day I said, okay, I've been, and I just had one box, mm. so my cable <laughs> was like one sixty or seventy, one seventy a month. Gotcha. If you multiply that times twelve, times how many years I had it. That's a college education. That is a college education. If you think about it like that, you start looking at stuff. So it's just when you start looking at the way media is changing. Right. And if you study it, you see money opportunity in it. That's if you got the eye of marketing and business with it. Yeah. So pretty much since that just happened, set us all out of whack. Mm -hmm. Um we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna persevere through Deputy Mike leaving. He had um okay. of course he's the host, he has very good setups, yeah. but we're gonna move on past that and um, go back to whatever else you wanted to talk to, uh, talk about, because we covered the whole student thing. And I thought that like you talked to us before we started this podcast, mm -hmm. and I was like, 
why aren't we saving this? And I'm glad he asked you about it again because that was yeah. a great story. So if you have anything else like that, I would love. I to tell I still no tell students great. when I look at when you look at stuff around your community. Yeah. It could be from farming. It could be from gardening. It could, it could be from anything. Yeah. When you have that ability to create media, especially video and audio, and create a series behind that, yeah, that's your first full way into making money. Right. You need to start focusing on that right now. Gotcha. One book that I always refer to is uh, uh, building uh, building your story brand by Donald Miller. Okay. It's a it's a I think he has a he has his book. It's, it's, <laughs> it's just your cord coming. Oh, did the cord come out? Did your headphones unplug? Yeah. It's all right. Here, I can plug them back in. Uh. Anyway, so the book by Donald Miller. I'm gonna. It's um about yeah. building up your media company. Yeah, build, and no, starting well, early. Well, it's really building your story brand. Story brand. Uh, building your brand. That's a big thing. The story brand. Story. Story brand. brand. Okay. So you got marketing. So marketing is the selling of something. There you go. Yeah. Story brand is to tell them the story to put themselves in the story because when you put somebody into a story. Yeah you'll get a lot more out of them. You, okay. It's an emotional aspect to it. So with, with the way they, they do advertising now, when you see a commercial, it's a family scene, it's a story they're pitching. They're not saying, hey, buy this Coke. I see, I see what you're saying. See, when you said story yeah. or brand, I was thinking, yeah. like you said, marketing immediately. Yeah. But story brand, I see what you're saying now with the family or the idea. I mean, there's um commercials from back in the 60s that are all the way like the families and stuff from yeah, those. They have, just like, repeat. Right. They just repeat and keep going. And I honestly rebrands um like you said coke easy one is the polar right. bear that's been there for oh. yeah. the whole time <laughs> it's just been there. for it's example let's, let's go to a bakery yeah instead of having a spot say hey are we having uh five donuts for five dollars on wednesdays or whatever yeah do a commercial where you you have a scene somebody's coming in looking for something it's, it's bright and sunny mm. and they just come in and eating this donut and yeah. you show the breakers logo right that you put that vision so what you're doing is you're Telling the story visually, yeah. So if you got a person coming in eating a donut on a sun, on a sunny Sunday sunny morning, right? Bright Sunday morning. What is that person gonna do? I go person, get that donut. They're so, like, oh, it's sunny. Ooh, I actually must have doing that. Especially if it's Sunday that day. They're like, <laughs> yeah. oh, it's yeah. Sunday right now. <laughs> yeah, it's always, oh, this is beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I'll take it. It's my, it's yeah. my turn now. So it's like like with a baker, like, oh, let me create another episode of them making the donuts. They yeah. used to do that, right? And you just, I mean, you keep taking it. I mean. That's the bakery is a great example. Yeah. That's all brands are doing it. Yeah. If they, you if you go to like Trumbull County, it, the big thing with big cities, if you look at New, mm -hmm. New York, Chicago, uh, Los Angeles, uh, well, who am I missing? Uh, Nashville, Chicago. Yeah, but mainly the, the big three. Atlanta, Atlanta, the New big York, three, yeah, New York, Chicago, Chicago and LA. LA. Yeah. Atlanta is number four probably. Yeah. But why are they that big? I have because a funny they are the home of the major media companies. Oh, yeah. I have a funny one about Atlanta. Uh, not just Atlanta, Georgia, the okay. state of Georgia. So I always thought watching those movies and stuff growing up that Georgia was a film company or a film brand. Oh, really? Little, <laughs> little to know is when Georgia comes up on your screen with the peach at the end of it, that's the state mm -hmm. taking, okay. getting profits you for filming and okay. stuff. <laughs> yeah. That's, um, that, like... I was watching it one day and I was um, having a talk with my friends about like film and stuff and they brought that up and they said it's the state of Georgia and I went, huh? Wow. Like yeah, the state of the Georgia gets profit from that. It's not a film company, it's just okay. the state. I was like, what? <laughs> so it's even the fact of thinking that a whole state is branded. So that, that's media. the one. That's the one thing that people don't realize. If you, if you start a, a media program, a media outlet here in Trumbull County, yeah, and you run it and you start getting gaining an audience, it's like like a podcast. Yeah. yeah. If you start a podcast and people think, oh, it's a struggle getting an audience. No, it's not. And <laughs> it's simple like this. You do your first podcast, but you turn around and you put, let's say, 250 bucks on this podcast advertising. And yeah, you right. target Trum Trumbull County. Mm -hmm. Let's say on that first one, you get 10,000 uh, listens, downloads. Now you take that 10,000. This is the business part. You take that 10,000 and say, hey, we're doing this podcast. You go to this local bank. Would you like to sponsor this piece? Mm, right. You're hitting 10,000 people. They're like, hey, 10,000 people are going to see your bank. Yeah. You know, you're going to have exposure. Look, we have 10,000 here. Yeah. They're going to see it. So if you can give us, and then you get that small sponsor. And I mean, you could use it for whatever upgrade. You, could, you promote more, it again. Getting more promoting. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, new, it builds up. Yeah. Yes. And then you just keep building that up because you keep going and getting 
uh, more Spotify or more. Sorry, I thought listens immediately. More yeah. listens, more views, yeah. and you're like, hey, look, more people are seeing this, and you just take it up and up and up. Because people don't know you can go to you can go to ads.spotify.com and and do an advertising campaign like you do on Facebook. Yeah, I actually didn't know that. Yeah, you do that, uh-huh. and you keep running that. You said, oh, we got thirty, forty thousand. It's okay, and it's steady. And yeah. w- once you start getting people to move, let's mm-hmm. say this community event program I mentioned, the five minute podcast. Right. Here's an event that got announced on this show, and mm-hmm. it's a hundred bucks on this. Trauma County event show. And let's say they were averaging 200 people before. Yeah. So now it's on Spotify. And since they got heard by 20,000 people, now instead of 200, you got 5,000 that showed up. Right. It's oh, man. Yeah. Well, how'd you get that on there? Oh, we was on so-and-so show. Mm-hmm. So here's my question to you. If you saw this group, this event, go from 200 to 2,000 off a $100 ad on your platform, mm-hmm. they come back to you again, how much you charge they come back to me again. Do the do the ask the question with the money again. Like what's a hundred bucks? They paid a hundred bucks, and their event went from two hundred people attended to two thousand people because they spent a hundred bucks on you well, on your show. Up, that went up by ten, uh, multiplied by ten. Okay. So, so I'm gonna multiply the cash amount by ten. Right. So you start looking at your impact. So okay, man, right, right, they got two thousand people. 2, you might you might take it up to five hundred bucks. Yeah. Right, 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 right. But they understand that because hey, we got okay, we got two thousand people that showed up. We right, good. Right, right. So if you got, again, if you end up doing that, getting that big audience, you mm-hmm. got 10 events, and this happened for 10 organizations, and now you got 5,000 for two weeks. Right. Offer, but you got to do research to get all the events and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Of course. That's the magic of media. But most right. people skip that part. Here's why, when you talk about TikTok, here's what yeah. an influencer does. Influencer says, oh, I'm going to get a microphone, a light, and a, and a mic. Just, I'm using my phone. That's all they need. <laughs> they, that's all um, they need. Yeah, really, yeah they, they just need. boom, put it all out there. Yeah, I got I got five thousand people on on spot on uh, TikTok. I said, well, that's can, like, you, can you pay your rent with that? Yeah, like, no. right. Yeah. Or they're like, they're like, oh, I had a million people view my account or like view something, and it's like, between how many videos did you have yeah. to make for that? You did ten times the work for you know the reward you got. You didn't get the reward that you deserve if you just took that time and invested it outside of being an influencer into like what you said, like doing a small podcast and then getting the next sponsor and the next sponsor and the next sponsor and you just took the time to do that instead of just trying to make you know a handful of videos a day you're going to have way better results uh, an eighth and ninth, eighth and ninth grader needs to start marketing right off the gate yeah. right, everybody should study marketing and start eighth and ninth yeah. grade yes so when when you look at it it's, t- it's cliches that we live by one is uh, like I said closed mouths don't get fed right mm-hmm. so if you're hungry you're not opening your mouth nobody knows you're starving right so the other one is the more things change, the more they stay the same. Gotcha. It don't really change. Yeah. yeah. You just, it, the language may change. People don't really change all this because they'll say, oh, we got all this technology. Yeah. Uh, okay, great. People ain't going to use it. <laughs> no. Right, no. You're, you're, you're going to bark right. about it for a few bit, uh, a little while, but unless you're a little marketing and advertising business, yep. that's all embedded in, that mark, in networking. Mm-hmm. If you're networking, meeting people, you, you're selling yourself. Here's who I am. That's when marketing and branding comes in. So you can put podcasts on there. You can do video on there. But there's so many opportunities out here that kids don't really think about until somebody shows them. Right. So. Okay. So I think now we're going to move into embarrassing moments. Okay. I think that's a great talk, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> embarrassing. All right. Um, we'll, I'll start with you as the guest. And if you don't have one ready, I'm sure me and Evan could quickly prop one up. Um, you know, I'm gonna I'm stick to the te- technical side. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like equipment that. Equipment wise, because <laughs> I have uh, my collection. I have cinema cameras. I have uh, photo ca- uh, for, uh, photo cameras and camcorders. Mm. And the last event I went to, actually it was about two weeks ago, I didn't check my battery charge before I left. Right. I didn't have Ooh. my. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ooh, I didn't yeah. have I didn't have my uh, my uh, my headphones either. Oh, <laughs> so I just rushed Oops. it. I didn't really want to go. Yeah. But somebody said, well, you need to be here. I said, okay. Let me, I just grabbed and it took off. Mm-hmm. So I go to the event and I'm really reading my LEDs on screen, make sure my audio is going to be okay. Yeah. Okay. But I'm watching my batteries. Mm-hmm. And so I'm, I'm su- sitting up there sweating. Because <laughs> <laughs> actually I was out of my battery. I had, a, I had my old school Sennheiser labs that run on the double A's yeah. and a battery and a camera. Yeah, the, and then it has so, like four green lights, mm-hmm. 
and that it was on that last <laughs> light it started flickering <laughs> and then i'm looking at the mic the batteries in my lavalier they yeah. started flickering yeah <laughs> and i'm sweating i'm just trying to ask questions like real quick will you hurry up will you hurry up or hurry? and people thought i was like feeling sick yeah but luckily i got it out but nice. yeah i went unprepared yeah i see your story and i'll match your story my video okay. production team went to the pittsburgh zoo to film for uh the video we made uh, and put up for local emmy and um mm. <laughs> Fun thing is we um, forgot a tripod, light tripod maybe, oh. which was not too bad. That was fixable yeah. because the natural light was looking really good anyway. Okay. And then we forgot a pair of headphones. So like you said, we're sitting there watching, and you know how a camera is. I mean, your audio levels on the camera is like very small. So we're sitting there very close to the camera trying to watch to make sure it's not peaking yeah. or going over. And you're not going to believe it. We're all just nervous and scared that night. We finally up, get it uploaded and sent out to all of us, and mm. the audio levels couldn't have been better. Mm. But, like, it was a real scary moment. And, of course, this is, like, one of our first shoots by ourselves without Duran or yeah. an instructor. So we're not going to sit there and be like, so we forgot headphones. We just, like, whispered it amongst us, and we went, audio levels are on the camera. <laughs> just watch those. Make sure they're not peaking. Right. So. Evan, you got any good technical embarrassing moments? I feel like that's a keeping well, it on topic. Well, we kind of, my dad and I went out on the job. It was for the uh, Cleveland Orchestra. Mm. Huh? And he didn't really think of bringing in a couple of labs. And then he forgot so what an xlr and then he Ooh. forgot a pair of headphones in the van and then he left something in the pvc pipe mm. so he and then he also forgot a uh another cable which you can find so we got in there and we started setting up yeah and then we brought the cart in <clears throat> and then he just started freaking out all of a sudden so we started running the wires and everything and then you know we had to run a wire across the back of the stage and we had to run one up into the piano gotcha for the a uh, shotgun for one of the singers and gotcha. then we well, had the mic one one of the ladies up as well did you guys have enough stuff to make it work though we had enough, but right. he had to make a run back out to the van, which he gotcha. had to go probably a eh, quarter of a mile. Quarter of a mile Ooh, back to the van to get hard. stuff, man. Equipment. That's tough. <laughs> that was the that funny, is tough. That was the funny part. But I felt bad, though. Right, I get it. I'm like, oh, dude. You know, yeah. he's always... Pre he, the one thing is, though, is he's always prepared, which is not before, which I... He didn't want to do Which, it. <laughs> well, no, he's always prepared, though. That's a good thing because, you know, this is what I get from him is we're always prepared. Yeah. yeah. You know, we always leave, like, really early. You know, we want to be there early. We want to get things done the night before. And yes. Everything yeah, ready. Yeah. That's of course. the best thing. Uh, so we got everything. We got set up. And then we found out that one of the, the mics weren't working. Ooh. The, the whole show, or you figured out before it started? No, it was act it actually started uh, when we went to test. Okay. Mm. Ooh, okay. And well, so you guys were able to fix it, though? No. Ooh, okay, that's that was, tough. That was the yeah. difficult part. Yeah, that's tough. Wow. And the problem was is that we it was one of the wires inside of one of the cables. So technically, my dad had to cut the wire, and he had to re-solder it when we got back to the house. Wow. So, that's, yeah. he Man, was that's... kind of like he was all freaked out. He was sweating, yeah. and <laughs> I haven't thought of anything. But in the years. end, <laughs> the yeah, I know. But in the end, we managed to make it work. That's good. So that's good. everything went great, though. It was you know beautiful performance. Uh, we had there was another part of the event where we went upstairs, and there you know the symphony came out. Yeah, and there was the uh, the conductor was you know a German conductor he came mm -hmm. in and it was it was great that's great that's, opportunity it's actually amazing that's a good thing to work on especially it, yeah it was know, beautiful up. Um, I think now is a good time to give shout outs oh uh, first I was uh, I would like to give a shout out to PBS student reporting lab I'm always urging students to apply for that it can open yeah. up up great opportunities yeah to give you a taste of what the world looks like beyond yep where yes. you live at 
Right, right. Um, and PBS Western Reserve um, and what we do in regards right. to people don't know we have a similar broadcasting uh, reach as VIZ. Okay. Uh, and we have slightly different content, especially with the city centric series that, we, that we're doing. But um, as far as that, yeah, that's PBS Western Reserve and PBS Student Reporting Lab. Well, I think from me and Evan both, we both want to shout out the people in this classroom, Duran for yes. having the podcast, yes. Deputy Mike for, you know, protecting us and just, you know, in and out of school. Why, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, it happens. Um, no, and also the people in the control room and whatnot yes. Yes. making the podcast Production run. Crew, yeah. Yeah. We also want to give a shout out to you for being able to yes. make it here thank today and for, be on the thanks. podcast. Yeah, thank you for having I enjoy it. I today. enjoy it. So. Yeah. Uh, last segment would be things to know before you go and we don't have a stinger for that just yet and I feel like we say this weekly and we still don't get one in but uh, on here it says October 12th is deputy game night this is where the students get to go and have with deputy DeLuga and deputy Mike we both have them in our school mm -hmm. and on Thursday nights they hold a game night for all the students because you know they're in the there's an adult ed section and they get to be here all night well, at the end or nearing the end of the night, they get to host a game night where all the students can come and play. I think it's a bunch of board games. Have yeah. you done one yet? No. Uh, no. I, I plan on I plan on if I'm off that day going to this one actually. But it's pretty much you get to go in and play a bunch of games with the deputies, and it's like really helpful for you know, I wouldn't say student teacher engagement, but like uh, you know to know that the other people in your building, right. the people in the building, aren't just here to be our superiors or anything right. like that. They are here because for us at yeah, the end of the day. The so it's really good engagement. Yeah, and I would like to add this, to this, the origin of the word youth, mm -hmm. the etymology of it, yeah. means vital force. Like that. So you yeah, know, you're marketing and you're good. controlling media, you mean a vital force. And that force could really, and knowing that force, you can create the path that you want to travel. Okay. Well, I think that about wraps it up for this episode of Doing Time with Deputy Mike. Thank you guys for tuning in, and yep. we'll see you next time. Yep. Cool.